Hello, my name is Jared Skeens and welcome to the Zoom Room. Today we want to look at Pure Math 3, Further Algebra, Part 2, Polynomials, and specifically we're going to look at the skill of synthetic division. I'm really excited about this because this can really save you time uh, during the exam, allow you to get some quick answers on certain question types so that you can use that extra time somewhere else in the exam. So what I first want to do is to introduce this concept. Synthetic division, it's very important that you pay attention to place value. Place value is the key to understanding how synthetic division works. So let's look at division that you're already familiar with. We're going to look at basic math division and algebraic long division, and then hopefully use that to help you transition into the synthetic division skill. So let's look at basic division here. Here we have the number 14 divided into 378. And we understand uh, that in basic math, we work on base 10. So this is our uh, 10 to the zero or the ones column. And this is the 10 to the one power or the tens column. And this is the 10 squared which is the hundreds column. And we actually have the same thing over here. Here's our ones column here, and here is the tens column. So we have 14 divided into 378. And so 14 is two digits long. And so if you go two digits uh, into the dividend, uh, you get two two times, and notice the two does not go over the three. I hope your math teachers don't allow that. That again, the two is put in its proper place value location as in the tens column. And two times 14 is 28. When you subtract, you get nine. Notice you subtract, you get nine. You bring down the next number, you now have 98. 14 goes into 98 exactly seven times. Seven times 14 is 98. You subtract and get a remainder of zero. So this zero is our remainder. And you notice that everything is in its place value. Here's the ones column. Here's the tens column. Here's the hundreds column. Everything is kept in its place value location. Just consider for a second the number 308. Notice even if there is not a digit involved, we still use a placeholder of zero. We do not bring the three and eight together because that would be 38. So the zero just simply means there are no tens. So there are eight ones, no tens, and three one hundreds. Okay, so we use zeros as placeholders in basic math. That same concept is going to carry forward into the algebra. Okay, so that was pretty easy and you should be able to follow that fine. Now let's move over to algebra. This is what's called long division. And in long division, we use the same principles as what we learned in basic math. And if you notice, I use the same coefficients and the difference between algebra and basic math is in basic math, you're working with digits, a single numeric value as a digit. And in algebra, you're working with terms. Terms have four parts, sign, coefficient, variable, and exponent. So notice the three X squared. It is understood positive. The coefficient is three. The variable is X and the exponent is the two. So we work with terms and we separate it out uh, based on its place value with respect to the exponent. So in other words, this column over here is the X to the zero. This column here is our X to the one power. This column over here is the X squared. And even up here, this would again be our X to the zero. Remember anything to the zero power cancels becomes one. And so we have four ones, and then our x to the one would be our base x. So when we divide this, it's quite similar to basic math. 
So because this is two terms deep, x plus four goes into three x squared plus seven x. Well, basically what we're doing here is we're doing three x squared divided by x and three x squared divided by x, one of the x's cancel and we're left with three x. Notice again, we don't write it at the front. We write it in the x column. Everything is about place value. So 3x is how many times x plus 4 goes into 3x squared plus 7x. So when we multiply it, we get 3x squared and 12x. And we subtract, just like we did over here. We subtracted. Now, some teachers uh, actually teach that you run a negative through and then add. I don't do that. I, I want my students to know how to subtract. But there are some teachers who say change the sign and add. And we'll see how that relates to synthetic division in a minute. But we're going to subtract. And so 3x squared minus 3x squared is 0. 7x minus 12x is a negative 5x. We bring down the next term just like we would bring down the next digit. We bring down the next term and then we divide again. So negative 5x divided by x is a negative 5. So negative 5 times x is negative 5x. Negative 5 times 4 is a negative 20. And we subtract again. So the operation is subtract. When you subtract a negative, you add. And that cancels out the 5x's. Subtract a negative, you add. So 20 plus 8 is 28. And this is our remainder, which then can be written like this. So 3x minus 5 plus a remainder of 28 over x plus 4. Remember, we're dividing what is in here by what is out here. So that's the 28 divided by x plus 4, and it just didn't go in evenly. So when we look at this and look at this, you said, OK, uh, Mr. Jared, uh, you used the digits 1, 4 here, 1, 4 here, 378, 378. How come we didn't end up with 27? Well, the issue is the base. If you look at this, this is base 10. If you look at this, this is base X, meaning we don't really know what the base is, or we could choose what the base could be. So let's just say we plug in a 10 for our X and make this base 10. Well, if we plug in a 10 for our x, we get 3 times 10 is 30, and 30 minus 5 is 25. Okay, so if we choose base 10, we get 30 minus 5 is 25. If we also plug in a 10 here, we get 14, and 28 divided by 14 is 2, and we're going to add 2 and we get 27. So we do get actually the same thing as what we got over here if our x represents base 10. If it represents any other base, then of course it's gonna come out with a different result. So actually at this point, the discussion could go off into two different directions. Both of them are quite interesting. The first direction is you could focus on the different bases that you could possibly use. And that is a very interesting discussion. However, it doesn't help you with the Cambridge questions. The direction that we want to go is not the base, because we're going to use base x, because we're working with polynomials. We're working with algebra. So we're going to leave the base as base x. What we want to focus on are the place values. So again, we see that this all represents an x to the zero column, or like the ones column. And this all represents the x column. And this is the x squared column. Everything can be written in terms or written separated out by place value. That is the important part that we want to move forward with as we move into the synthetic division. Okay. So with synthetic division, we're going to do the same thing here, but we're going to do it without the variables. We're just going to keep track of place value and use the numbers. So this 3x squared plus 7x plus 8, 
can be written as just a three, a seven, and an eight. And we're gonna keep track of the place values. Now we're gonna divide it, but we're gonna use a little bit different notation here. Instead of the dividing going up, we're gonna bring this bar down along the side. And notice this represents our 3x squared plus 7x plus 8. Now you don't have to write it up there, but when you're first learning it, you might want to start by writing it up there until your mind is really clear on place value location. Now our x plus 4, again, you don't have to, but I'm going to write it here just so that you can see it. And so these, we've taken the 3, the 7, and the 8, and we're keeping track of the place value. Now with the x plus 4, we're going to go back to that part of subtracting. Remember, I said that for me, I subtract and, and make sure my students know how to subtract if I were teaching that level. Uh, but some teachers do change the sign and add. So in synthetic division, that's actually what happens. We change the sign, but instead of changing the sign in here, we're going to change the sign out here. So we're going to have a column here for our four, and this is a negative four. So we're going to change the sign. And with this front term, when you get to the front term, you're going to put each term, the coefficient here, you're going to change the sign, and you're going to keep working diagonally until you've reached the front. When you reach the front, if it has a coefficient of one, you don't have to worry about it. It's like it's, it's a one times anything is just anything or is, is itself. So we don't worry about it if it's a one. Later, uh, maybe at the end of the session, I'll show you what to do if that's not a one. So we have negative four and here we have a one. If it's a one, you don't worry about it. So at the bottom of this, which was the last number that we've written, we draw our bar across. Okay. So we bring down the first digit, bring it down, we get a three. We multiply it by our number out here, we get negative 12. And we add, remember we change the sign. So we're gonna change the sign and add instead of subtracting. So we change the sign, now we're adding, we get a negative five. Negative five times negative four is 20 and we add that and we get 28. Now, if we wanna understand what we've just done, we need to go back and look at place values. Here we have an X squared divided by an X. So if you have an X squared divided by an X, three X squared over X gives you three X. That means we've went from quadratic down to linear, okay? Exponent of two is quadratic, exponent of one is linear. So that means we go from a base x of two to now this is a base x of one. So this starts with x to the one and goes to x to the zero. Once you reach zero, this rest of it is the remainder. So this is translated as three x minus five the remainder of 28 over x plus 4. And that is exactly the same thing that we got over here. Remember, you don't have to write this stuff up here. You don't have to write this down here. You're just working with the numbers. You don't have to write all those variables over and over again. And once you get the hang of this, you can do this very quickly to get to the answer. And it saves you uh, that extra time of writing. And we're dealing with polynomials. We're not dealing with lines and quadratics anymore. We're dealing with polynomials that have a lot of terms to them. And you don't want to have to keep writing variable after variable after variable. Okay, so let's see how this applies to the Cambridge questions. So let me set up the first question for us. Okay, let's look at our first question. I'll screen share it with you so that you can read it yourself. Here's a Cambridge question. Notice this is dub, uh, from the W17, Winter 17, if you're interested in the particular uh, past paper it comes from. 
says find the quotient and remainder when x to the fourth is divided by x squared plus 2x minus 1. This is only a three-point question, and it doesn't really deal with the other material that's in the polynomials uh, chapter. It's just strictly a division, a long division problem. And so this is the kind of question that this skill of synthetic division can really help you do it quickly so that you can move on to other questions in the test. So let's go back to the board. I've already written it up here. X to the fourth divided by X squared plus two X minus one. We're gonna use synthetic division. Remember the key is place value. So this is our X to the fourth term. So this would be a one, one for X to the fourth. That means there are no X cubes. There are no X squareds. There are no X's and there are also no constants. So you need to make sure that you have placeholders for any term that is not there. One X to the fourth. So here's four, three, two, one, zero. You always end up with your exponent being zero. So like in base 10, 10 to the zero was your ones column. This is like your ones column, your X's column, your X squared, your X cubes, your X to the fourth. Now we draw our little line out here. Now we have three terms. So remember this represented your X to the fourth and then there was nothing after that. And then over here we have our X squared plus two X minus one. Again, you don't have to write it there, but I'm doing it here at the beginning to help you understand the place value location. So what we do, remember we're gonna change the sign and add. So we change the sign of our negative, our negative one and it becomes a positive one. And then we're gonna bring this one down and change the sign of our two and it's gonna be a negative two. And then we look at the front term and as long as it has a one as a coefficient, we don't have to worry about it. Again, later I'll show you what to do if it's not a one. So this is the bottom now of our chart. Okay. So we bring down the first term, one. We multiply one times one. Now, where do we put it? Well, this is three terms deep, one, two, three. That means we need to go one, two, three deep here. If you remember how basic math works, if you set up an example, you'll see that's the same thing we do in basic math. So, except it's with digits instead of terms. So one, two, three means we go one, two, three. So one times one is one. One times negative two, that's only two terms deep. So one, two, one times negative two is negative two. And then once you've filled up a column, you add so here's negative two. Now we're gonna multiply again. Negative two times one is negative two. Negative two times negative two is four. We filled up a column, so we add, we get five. One times five is five. Five times negative two is negative 10. Now notice we've, fit, we've gotten to the end of the row. Once you get to the end of the row, you stop. Notice that uh, there is an empty space here, and that's because these are diagonal, so all of these will be diagonal as well. So you're not going to get this last spot filled because of this diagonal here. So now that you've got to the end, you just add up your rows. So we have a negative 12, and here we have a 5. Now we need to figure out, and you can do this either at the beginning or at the end, we need to figure out where the remainder is at. So we go back here, we have an X to the fourth divided by an X squared. You look at the highest exponents. And when you divide, you subtract exponents. So X to the fourth divided by X squared is X squared. That means this is our X squared, this is our X, and this is our constant. Meaning everything after the constant is our remainder. So this here is the quotient And our remainder 
is, and again, you could start from the end. This is our constant. That would be like our x to the zero, and this is x to the one. So our remainder is a negative 12x plus five. And this here is the answer to that question. It's a three point question. And again, you don't have to write uh, you know, this stuff. You can, it, once you understand it, you can go right into the numbers. You can do this relatively quickly. You just need to understand how to interpret the results and where to draw your remainder line. So x fourth over x squared is x squared. So this is squared x constant. That's where your remainder goes. Your remainder is two terms, meaning x and constant. And then you write it out and you're done. So this is a tool. It is not all the things involved with polynomials, but it is a tool that you can use from time to time. And that's going to be the important thing for you is when to use this tool and when to use uh, something else. So let's go to another one and get this practice down on how the synthetic division works. So let me set up the next question. Okay, here we go. Let's look at the question and I need to get rid of that one. Here we go. It says the polynomial x to the fourth plus 2x cubed plus ax plus b where a and b are constants is divisible by x squared minus x plus one. Find the values of a and b. Now notice this one is five points and I have a rule with the Cambridge exams of a ratio of uh, seven to five. In other words, you have seven minutes of time for every five points of Cambridge question. That is just the ratio that I use to help keep track of time for a Cambridge exam. So since this is worth five points, you have seven minutes to do it. And I'm going to show you that you can do this much more quickly. I could probably do it in one minute. It might take you two if you're just learning. And that way you'd have five minutes of time to use elsewhere on the exam where you might have to think more. This says divisible, meaning there's no remainder and or it's implied that there's no remainder and it wants you to find the values of a and b and yes you can use synthetic division even with variables so let's go back to the board and see how that we can do this so i've already written it out here so here is our uh, dividend so we have a one we have for our x cubed a two Notice there is no x squared, so make sure you're paying attention to those place values. There is no x squared. There is an a for the x, and there is a b for the constant. And this is going to be divided by, here is our divisor. And again, just so that you can see, I'll write it out front. Normally I don't, but I will for your sakes. So we change the sign and have a row for a negative one. And then this one is a negative one. We're gonna change the sign and have a row for positive one. And then because the front one has a one coefficient, we don't worry about it. We bring this down like this. So we bring down our first term, one, or first constant number there. One times negative one is negative one. We're three numbers deep. Here's three numbers deep. Negative one, positive one goes here. We're multiplying when we do this. Multiply, multiply, and then add. Two plus one is three. Three times negative one is negative three. Three times positive one is positive three. We add this, we get two. 2 times negative 1 is negative 2. 2 times 1 is 2. And here, when we add this up, uh, we get a minus 1. Okay, that's all in this column. And this column is a b minus 2. Okay, now let's figure out where our remainder goes. Sometimes I actually like to do that at the beginning. I haven't yet. Uh, but we have an x to the fourth divided by x squared. That means this is x squared. So x squared, x constant, that means this is our remainder. And remember it says it's divisible by it, implying that there's no remainder, it divides evenly. 
So now all we need to do is take each one of these. If our remainder is zero, that means all of it is zero. So a minus one equals zero. It means a equals one. That's one of our values. B minus two has to equal zero. Therefore, B equals two. There's our second answer for that, one and two for the B. And if you wanted to know the quotient, that is the answer to the division problem, you'd have x squared plus 3x plus 2. That's the quotient. This is the remainder and implied that it's 0. And so you get your answer for a and b. And if you needed it for some other part of the question, you would have your quotient right here. Okay, so that went very fast. Notice that didn't take us seven minutes to do, even with the explanation. So again, once you understand it, you can actually go very quickly, although do be careful with your signs and also be careful with your place values, especially if you need a zero for a placeholder. That is true for both the dividend as well as the divisor. If you need a place value for the divisor, you can have zeros out here. So if you need a zero, make sure you put in zeros as placeholders. So let's move on to the next problem. Okay, let's look at our problem here. Again, you can see what year and code it comes from up there. Uh, the polynomial x to the fourth plus three x cubed plus a x plus b, where a and b are constants, is denoted by p of x. So in other words, a function of x where they're using the letter p. When p of x is divided by x squared plus x minus one, the remainder is two x plus three. Find the values of a and b. Notice again, it's a five point question. So I already have this written on the board here. And again, all we need to do is pay attention to place values. This time they have provided a remainder for us. And that's what we're gonna compare against when we get to the end. So we write our numbers down, we have one, three, notice there's no squared, then an A and a B. So draw our line down here. And this time I'm not gonna write it up here. I hope that you can follow along. So <clears throat> the last term is negative one. So we change the sign, make it positive one. The next one is positive one. So we're gonna make it negative one and we're going diagonal here. And the front one, the front term has a coefficient of one. Again, we don't need to worry about it. So this is the bottom of our chart. Then we bring down the first number, which is one. We multiply, one times one is one. This is three terms deep. Again, pay attention to place values. Uh, you need to, because you have square, first power, zero power. So that's three terms deep. One, two, three means it goes here. One times one is one. One times negative one is negative one. That's two, two terms deep. Now we add three plus a negative one is two. Two times one is two. Two times negative one is negative two. We add, we get a negative one. Negative one times one is negative one. Negative one times negative one is positive one. So this gives us a plus three. This one gives us b minus one. When we check to see where our remainder goes, x to the fourth divided by x squared is x squared. There's x squared, x constant. Here is our remainder. So that means the quotient, the quotient would be x squared plus two x minus one. This is the remainder, and it says the remainder is 2x plus 3, meaning our a plus 3 is equal to 2, because this is in the x, here's constant x. So the 2x, that's 2. So that means subtract 3, subtract 3, a equals a negative 1. And the b minus 1 equals 3. That's the constant. Add 1, add 1 equals 4. So negative 1 and 4 are our values for a and b, and the quotient, if you need the quotient, is x squared plus 2x minus 1. 
Again, you would have seven minutes to do this, uh, roughly speaking, and you can do this with synthetic division in probably two minutes or less. You can get it down to one minute if you really uh, practice this, and that leaves you time for something else. Let's keep working on it. I find that students sometimes uh, start losing their confidence on, on this question type. And again, it's all about place value. Place value is everything with this question. I'll set up another one for us. Okay, let's look at this last question here. You'll see that it has a little extra uh, information that we have to find. It says the polynomial 4x to the fourth plus ax squared plus 11x plus b, where a and b are constants, is denoted by p of x. It is given that p of x is divisible by x squared minus x plus two. So in this first part, find the values of a and b, kind of just like what we did before. Again, it's five points. And then for the second part, when a and b have these values, that is the values that we just find in part one, find the real roots of the equation p of x equals zero. So let's do the first part first, like we have been, and then we'll discuss what's needed for the second part. So it says here that this is divisible by this. So let's go ahead and look at what we have. We have a four. Notice there is no cube. So we need a zero for the cube. There is an a for the squared, an 11 for the x, and a b for the constant. Now we change the sign, so instead of a positive two, we put a negative two. Instead of a negative one, we put a positive one. And our coefficient in the front is one, so this is where we stop here. And let's this time put the remainder in at the beginning. So x to the fourth divided by x squared is x squared. So this is our x squared column. This is our x column. This is our constant, the x to the zero, meaning our remainder will be these last two uh, columns here. So uh, you can put your remainder in at the beginning or at the end, doesn't matter, as long as you read it correctly. Now we bring down the first number, which is four. Multiply is negative eight. Notice it goes in three spaces, one, two, three. So here's our negative eight. Four times one is four. It goes in two spaces, because this one represents right here, two spaces. So two spaces in is our four. We add this up, we get four. Four times negative two is negative eight again. Four times one is four again. We add this up, we get a minus four, because the negative eight and the four make negative four. And a minus four times negative two is a negative two a plus eight. Don't worry about the variables, it's just algebraic. So a minus four times negative two is negative two a plus eight, and a minus four times one is a minus four. So this becomes, here we have a negative 12 and 11 is negative one. So we have a minus one. And over here we have, uh, if we put the a's first, a negative two a plus b, plus eight, all of that's the constant. Now remember it said that it's divisible by, again, implying that the remainder is zero. So if the remainder is zero, we can go right here. You can't go here because we have two unknowns and you can't go over here because we don't know what the constant's supposed to be. But we do know that the remainder is supposed to be zero. So here we can get uh, a minus one, equals zero, so a equals one, there's that one. And once we know what a is, we can put a in here to get a negative three, one minus four is negative three. We can also put a in here. And this also has to equal zero because it's part of the remainder. So that gives us a b plus six equals zero, so b 
equals a negative six. So we have one and negative six for our A and B. Now that was the first part of the question. The first part of the question was to find A and B. The second part of the question now gets us into a little bit more of information with polynomials. And it said to find the real roots. Well, one of the things that you need to figure out is how many roots that you should be looking for. And your highest exponent tells you how many roots the equation has. It says this is your P of X. If P of X equals zero, then that means there are four roots. The question is, how many are real roots? Well, the opposite of real roots are imaginary roots or complex numbers. And we're not gonna get to complex numbers until later in the Pure Mass 3 book. So, but we need to realize that there are imaginary numbers out there, roots. And imaginary numbers always come in pa pairs. They always come in twos when it comes with polynomials. So all four could be imaginary or two could be imaginary and two real or all four could be real. That's our options. Four real, two real, two imaginary, or all four imaginary, and there's no reals. Okay, so that's our three options. Now, what we want to look at is we've already divided out this x squared minus x plus two. So let's examine this and see if there's any real roots in that. Well, when you look at it, you cannot factor two you can't factor two and come up with uh, a negative one. You can't by adding. The factors of two do not add up to a negative one. So this does not factor. That doesn't mean the roots are imaginary. So what we actually need to use is the discriminant, the b squared minus 4ac. So if we use the b squared minus 4ac, so here's the b, minus 4a is 1, c is this, we get a 1 minus 8, which is a negative 7, which is less than 0. When our b squared minus 4ac is less than 0, what we learned back in Pure Maths 1 is that there's no solution. What it really means is there's no real solutions. So these two roots happen to be imaginary roots or complex numbers. So we don't have to worry about those because the question is asking for the real roots. But we already know that two of those four have been taken up with imaginary numbers. Now we need to check for the other two. The other two are going to come from here. This is our quotient. Remember, the remainder comes out to zero. So this is our quotient, meaning we have 4x squared plus 4x minus 3 equals zero, does this factor? Well, the factors of three are one and three, the factors of four are one and four, two and two. We have to subtract to give us a four, and that's six minus two. So this can factor two x, two x. We want a uh, plus three, and we want a minus one. So let's just double check. Two x times two x is four x squared. Negative one times three is negative three. Here's a positive six minus two is positive four. So this gives us, when we set them equal to zero, x equals one half and x equals a negative three halves. Those are our two real roots. These others we don't need to worry about because we already tested it and see that it's no solution or no real roots from those two. These are our two uh, so this is our answer to part ii, and this up here was our answer to part i. Okay, now let me set up for one other thing and uh, to help you with what happens when uh, we don't have a one at that beginning coefficient, just in case you run into that. Okay, I just wanna show you what happens when you divide by 
uh, this divisor where we do not have a one as a coefficient in the front. So I've made an example that will work nicely to show you how it's done. Uh, it's probably rare that you would see it in a Cambridge question, but you might. And so it's important that you know how to do it. So in this case, we have 2x cubed plus 11x squared minus x minus 3 divided by 2x plus 1. So again, we write our numbers 2, 11, negative 1, and negative 3. Put our bar here along the side. We change the sign, so we have negative 1. Now, before, we said if you have a 1 as a coefficient on the front term, you don't have to worry about it. Well, we now have a coefficient other than 1. So we're still going to draw our bar across, uh, just like we did before. But now, underneath, instead of like dividing by 1, now we're dividing by 2. So we're going to put a little bit of a divide by 2 here and give us more room down here. So if you don't have a 1 as your coefficient on the front term, you're going to have to divide by that number after this bar that goes across here. So after, other than that, most everything uh, basically stays the same. You bring down your first number, which is a 2, except now we have to divide by 2, which gives us a 1. This is the number that we now multiply back. 1 times negative 1 is negative 1. It's two terms deep, so that goes right here. 11 minus 1 is 10. Divide by 2 is 5. One, uh, negative 1 times 5 is negative 5. That adds up to negative 6. Divide by 2 is negative 3. 2 times negative, uh, or sorry, negative 1 times negative 3. Negative 1 times negative 3 is positive 3. This then is our remainder of 0. An x cubed divided by x is an x squared. This is our x squared, x constant. This is the remainder, of course, if you divide it by zero, it's still zero, uh, which by the way, actually, once you get into the remainder, you don't divide by the two anymore. Just remember that. So you don't uh, divide your remainder. So in this case, knowing where your remainder is at, you might wanna do that at the beginning because once you get into the remainder, you stop dividing by the two. Hopefully I remember that correctly. It's been a while since I've done that part. So this part, again, 2, 11, negative 1, negative 3. We still change the sign, negative 1. But on this one, we don't change the sign, but we do divide by that number down here. So bring down 2, divide first, then multiply, add divide first, then multiply, add first, divide, then multiply. Once you get into remainder, you stop dividing. So our answer then is x squared plus 5x minus 3. And if you want to see if that checks out, we can come over here, take x squared plus 5x minus 3, multiply it by 2x plus 1. So we can double check if we actually did it right. 1 times negative 3 is negative 3. So now we're doing multiplication, again, with place value, long multiplication. 1 times 5x is 5x. 1 times x squared is x squared. 2x times negative 3 is a negative 6x. Notice it goes in the x column. 2x times 5x is 10x squared and 2x times x squared is 2x cubed. We add those all together. We get 2x cubed plus 11x squared minus x minus 3. And that is indeed what we had here at the very beginning. So that demonstrates that this was actually correct. But this is what you do when you don't have a 1 as a coefficient. Should be pretty rare for Cambridge questions uh, but it might, uh, if, if my memory serves me right, it did pop up a time or two, but not very often. And anyway, that will help you with that. Now, remember, this is one tool 
in the polynomial section specifically for division and when you don't have additional information to work with. So in the next section, we're gonna look at polynomials uh, with more information and, and how you mix that together. But thank you again for joining me in the Zoom room and hope to see you again next time.